There's no question about it. Welfare, who needs it, who gets it, is changing across the world. Earlier, we heard about how the so-called bedroom tax is affecting the disabled here in the UK. Across the Atlantic, one in six Americans are now using food stamps, federal payments each month to help cover the bills at the supermarket. The numbers dependent on the scheme spiked during the financial crisis but have stayed high despite recent signs that the US economy is growing again. Our economics editor Faisal Islam travelled to the traditionally wealthy Rhode Island on the east coast of America where he found the use of food stamps is moving up the income scale to reach those who have always thought of themselves as the traditional American middle class. For one-sixth of Americans, the economic recovery is far from golden. Food stamps, rebranded as EBT or Electronic Benefit Transfer, is the calling card of America's working poor and its living standards crisis. Here in Rhode Island, between New York and Boston, this electronic card meant to control welfare spending on food is gold in colour. And in this state, some towns are so dependent on this federal money that the economy runs to the timetable of the gold card. The first of every month, gold card day, a backdoor local stimulus. The cards are topped up with hundreds of dollars of cash from Washington and the trolleys and car parks of the supermarkets fill up as well. That's when everyone gets their food stamps. Gabby, put this on the seat with you. At a nearby farmer's market, even here, about a third of the custom comes this way. You get, this, you get the gold card. Yeah. And <laughs> that's what everyone calls it, <laughs> or a lot of people call it that. And um, at the first of the month, they automatically give you the money onto the account. And then it, it works like a, a debit card. So if you go to a store, you just swipe it and you enter in like your code number and all that. And across America, this card and this program, fully funded by the US government, has become a symbol of a two-tier America. In the supermarkets, users are not that keen to display their use. They see you spending food stamps and they judge you for what you're buying. And it could be as little as, oh, you wanted, I'm a healthy shopper, but say you want ice cream today. And the person behind you in line, they'll judge you for that. And now it's not so bad because you have a card. They don't know whether it is, but they can still see the card. And some of the cashiers still ask you, well, is it EBT? So right there. So it does. It makes it, it, makes it a stigma. From the outside, Bristol, Rhode Island looks rather wealthy. There are yachts, the classic New England weatherboard housing. But behind these walls are many with jobs who are struggling without state help. Food stamps are the symbol of a two-tier American recovery, and Republicans are now attempting to remove a quarter of the program's budget in order to cut the deficit. So here we have it, the mighty dollar, the greenback, symbol of the affluence of the USA, particularly in a place like this, Bristol in Rhode Island. But there's a new kid on the block, a piece of plastic called the EBT card, the Electronic Benefit Transfer, part of the SNAP program from the federal government, better known as food stamps. There's nearly 50 million of these in the US now. That's more than doubled, and that's more than the population of Spain. It's practically a new currency. How often do you come here? Once a month. Rita and her son, Radley, explained to me how they use Rhode Island's new currency. Radley gets a fixed monthly allowance of food stamps for his disability. In my workplace, at least three to four people that are doing this. You all know, working. Uh, working and all doing it also. Wage. Yeah, and they have they have families they're trying to support, and you know, and all that. It's, they're not just single people. So they just aren't the jobs, or they just aren't the high-paid jobs, or what? What is uh, it? It seems bizarre. You, you sort of think that if you if you work, you could yeah. Well, get we don't by. make the, we don't make enough. You know, uh, people don't make enough. In uh, <laughs> Tom, a carpenter who injured himself working, explains the typical pattern of usage that sees supermarkets in these neighbourhoods boom on the first of every month. Ah, so it's the same gold card. Yes, it's gold. Same it's, gold. Not the Amex gold card. No, I was hoping for a platinum one day. <laughs> so you get the money goes in on the first. Goes in month. on the first. They get they give me two hundred dollars for the month, and the the food bank sub, sub, substitutes anything that I can't get on this card. Okay, fine. So, are you finding that two hundred dollars stretches over the whole month, or does it sometimes fall a bit short? It's sometimes a little short, but I'm, I've been managing to stretch it out. Of your friends, of your neighbor neighbors. 
how many I don't are know. also signed up. I really right. don't, I don't know. know. It's, it's not, not people, red. It's not people red. don't talk about people it. People don't want to talk about it. Yeah, there's a stigma, unfortunately, attached to this. And, yeah. um, you know, True. people, and I'll, I'll be honest, we, we don't talk about it either. Yeah. You know, we don't tell people. I met Tom, Rita, and Radley at a Bristol food pantry. Here from two years ago, they realized that the food stamps were not lasting the month. But even that's changed recently. It's really kind of a hidden problem. And Karen, who runs the operation serving one in ten of the residents of this seemingly wealthy town, tells me why. The food stamp money would last them about three weeks and then that they needed something to fill in the, the gap. At the what were they doing in that final few days? They would... Then they would come to food pantries okay. and, and get stuff to hold them over at the end of the month. Um, lately, food prices have gone up. There have been cuts to the, the SNAP benefits and we've seen, we haven't seen that pattern as much. We're pretty much as busy at the beginning of the month as we are at the end. I think people are, are seeing what they can get at the pantry and then filling in what they can't get with the with the food stamps because that's not going to last them all month. Back in 2000, just over 17 million Americans were receiving food stamps. That number edged up over the decade, but then exploded after the financial crisis in 2008 and stayed there, standing this year at just shy of 48 million people. That's one in six Americans. Each household gets, on average, $274 a month, that's about £180. Down the road in Providence, the logistical centre for Rhode Island's food banks is preparing for the holiday rush of demand. You can drop food off here, but not pick it up. Bankers queue up to sort through donations of surplus food from multinationals. You know, whole grain lasagna, okay. they just pop the top and put it in the microwave. So right now the challenge is to manage the spike in demand caused by the inability of many Rhode Island families to pay for food for children during school holidays. Think of it, if you are a parent and your child is now out of school, you have two more meals a day that you have to be taken care of. Not only that, it's summertime and the kids are out and they're active and they're hungrier than ever. And they're coming to you and saying, Mom, what's for lunch? And so now you can see it's, it's got everything in there. It's got your cereal, it's got granola bars, crackers, juices. They've stocked up in the logistical center warehouse, but more lean and efficient food manufacturing means there are less unsold surpluses to donate to the poor, generating a new type of funding crisis here. And there's a more fundamental change afoot. It's very basic. Potatoes, apples, onions, carrots. It's what used to be this nation's middle class. Poverty in America used to be isolated in uh, urban settings, uh, in rural settings that most people didn't see. Now it's very public. So many people know someone who's had a a terrible time since 2008, so it's much closer to home. This is the calling card of how, even though joblessness is now lower than Britain, working America, the great middle class, are finding it tough to make ends meet, a far from golden recovery. Faisal Islam, Channel 4 News, Rhode Island.